our podcast. This is our first episode, and we are calling this Those Twins Who Knit, um, hopefully for obvious reasons. Um, but this is a place that we um, will hopefully be sharing all of our knitting and things we're working on, things that we've made, um, mostly knitting, but we do a little bit of other things as well. We dabble in like mostly sewing outside of knitting. I know you crochet a little bit. A little, little bit, but it'll probably be like 90, 95% knitting because that's definitely our main hobby and like what we continuously always go back to. And while I don't always have a sewing project, like I always have a knitting project. Or if two not, or three. Yeah. Or, <laughs> um, if not more. <laughs> so um, we've been knitting pretty much our whole lives. Our mom taught us how to around the second grade of elementary school. So that would have been probably around age seven. And we really never stopped, but I think that this hobby of ours really picked up and got um, to be a major part of our life around college because that's when we kind of found like Instagram and really got into Ravelry and just saw how much was out there and started garment knitting. And that's when I feel like uh, we just really took off and fell even more in love. <laughs> we kind of realized there was like a bigger knitting community out there and, and more options of things that were our style and things that we would enjoy making outside of just like the books and magazines that we'd seen previous to that. And I, I do think books and magazines have gotten a lot better recently, but I think when we were younger, they maybe weren't always like as trendy as they are now. So. Well, when we would go to like the public library or half price books, so they're probably old books too. And so, yeah, seeing a lot of more contemporary designs, we just really got invested. Yeah. <laughs> and ever since then, we've just, we've always had projects going. So, um, should we start with what we're wearing today? Yeah, we'll probably just follow, like, the traditional knitting podcast, talking about, like, what we're wearing, what we're working on, our finished objects, and then any acquisitions, if we have any. I've got one. Not many. Yeah. It's a slow, slow acquisition month this yes. month. Not a bad thing. Um, I'll go first because I, uh, we talked about how we were sewing a little bit. I <laughs> decided to wear something that I sewed because it's so hot, guys. It's like probably 90 some and it is not even noon yet. So um, this is a dress that I finished from, I think it's called Flid. Their Instagram is flid.no. I'll link them in the description. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these things right. But um, this is the Astrid dress, and I made it with We Are the Fab. I think it's just called the Fabric Store, and their handle is We Are the Fabric Store. It's the Australian one. There's another store called the Fabric Store that is different. This is We Are the Fabric Store, <laughs> and um, this is with their color celery. And I was really proud of this make because um, with sewing, a lot of the things that I've done have had either really detailed instructions or they've had video instructions with them or things that have just kind of helped me along the way. And this is the first one where the instructions were very cut and dry. There was not a lot of detail or a lot of extra information. And so I was kind of intimidated at first, but finishing it and like it fitting, it just felt really exciting. So um, I'm really happy with it. And you probably can't see this. I probably don't want to show too much because I didn't iron this before. Um, but I added pockets to mine as well. So the, the original one didn't have that. And everything's better with pockets. So. Okay, so that's what I'm wearing. Um, for me, this tank top that I'm wearing is the Pie Camisole by, I think it's Crea Dia. I, she, her name is, I believe it's Nadia, but she goes by, I think it's Cradia Studio on Instagram. We'll also know. link it below. Yeah, she has beautiful designs. Absolutely beautiful. Um, this is the second one that I've made, actually. You can't really see the detail because it's black, but I wanted something that was, like, basic and black and would go with all of the pants that I own. Um, but it's it's a super fine gauge. I think the pattern recommends 1.5 needles, but I'm a really tight knitter, and so I typically have to go up a needle size. So to get gauge, I went to 2.5. Um, but just know that's... For a really basic summer tank top, it's 
it's so perfect it's so cute but it's not gonna be a quick knit you're not gonna knock it out uh very quickly like you made some other summer knits but i always think that was summer knits i'm I always know. like oh it doesn't have sleeves it's gonna go by so fast because the gauge is so tiny it's not true <laughs> yeah so the first one that i made was like a brown color and it was in um sunday by sanda's bar and they're like fingering weight i think it's merino um which I love and that's what the pattern recommended, but I wanted something that was a little bit cooler and not 100% wool for summer. So this is Sanda's Garn Tin Line instead. And I think I'm gonna be happy I went with this throughout the rest of summer. I actually have some of that yarn in my stash, so I might, you should just make a way to steal your idea. Duplicate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and we also both have works in progress. You already have yours, so I'm gonna grab mine. Oh. It's actually the same work in progress, but we're in diff very different places. <laughs> we decided we needed matching sweaters because we both really loved this yarn. Yeah. So we're both making the champagne cardigan by Petite Knit. Um, it looks kind of... It needs to be blocked, obviously. It's a little bulky right now. But I finished the body, and then I'm working on the button band. So yeah, your button band looks really good. Thank you. I'm actually a little, I, I'm a little nervous about my button band. I'm going to finish it and block it and see how it goes. I may need to redo it and go up the needle size. As I mentioned, I'm a really tight knitter. So the pattern for the body recommends size seven, but I went up to size eight. Oh, I actually and, have our swatches. And then for the button band, obviously I needed to go up a needle size two. So I went up from a 2.5 in US needles to a US three needle. I was surprised, sorry, I'm gonna, I was surprised, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but the difference, I wonder if it'll let me, the difference between a seven and an eight with these swatches was pretty dramatic. I was, and we got pretty much the same gauge when we both swatched yeah. on both. So we both went up to an eight. Sorry. Oh, but, but what I didn't account for when I was picking out needles, like I knew I needed to go up a needle size for the button band, but what I forgot to keep in mind is that the difference from a US 7 to a US 8 needle is half of a millimeter, but the difference between a two and a half to a three US needle is only a quarter of a millimeter. So I'm not quite sure, maybe I should have gone up to a US like three and a half or a four on the button band. It is stretching quite a bit. Like it doesn't look like it's too, but it's a little bunchy, but it may block really nicely so i'm i'm honestly just gonna finish the button band and block it and then make my determination then because it may block really beautifully but if it is bunching then we'll just frog it and <laughs> are you start again to do the sleeves before you block it or are you like i need to know when you're gonna block it um, right away? i don't know tbd to um, be determined it'll depend on how nervous i am about it See, I think I was more nervous about, and I don't, I don't know why, because everyone who's made this pattern, it just looks beautiful on Ravelry and Instagram, but I was very nervous about how big these sleeves were looking, because I've got little twig arms, um, and so I really wanted to start on the sleeves so I could kind of feel better about those, and actually I already am, I know they're going to be oversized, but having this extra amount of weight I think is making it look better. So I started on the arms, and so now I'm wondering if I should finish this, do a button band, and then go back. Yeah, well, part of the reason I started at the button band is because I don't like when sweaters get too heavy and you're working the button band, because since you're working on, like, you know, just a small set of stitches at the same time, if it gets super heavy, that it's just annoying to me. So I was like, I want to do it while the sweater is still somewhat light, because it's just the body and not... <laughs> Not the body and the sleeves. So between the two of us, we'll have a fully finished body and sleeves, <laughs> but maybe not on the same garment. <laughs> um, here's the Yeah, my confession, I guess, is that I've actually never done a button band this way, but I think I understand the concept, so I'm not nervous about it. Yeah, because it's double knit, I always... I'm always just like, oh, it'll go so fast, but then double knitting is so slow. It takes forever. It takes I have forever. done double knitting, just not in a band. Yeah. Um, but also with this project, and we haven't even talked about what yarn it is, um, I feel like we learned, and I think we knew this already, but I feel like this 
solidified that we're pretty much spot on with gauge as far as like we have very similar gauge yeah we usually I think have to go up a needle size or two depending on the designer or the just how the gauge works out but um our swatches I wish you brought yours because they were like identical it was it was kind of funny yeah so um that was kind of a fun thing for this project because We've actually never knit the same project before, like the exact same project at the same time. Yeah, done like a knit along together. Yeah. We've definitely had moments where it's like, oh, like Rachel knit something and I'll be like, oh, that was really cute. I'll knit it too. But uh, it's not one that we've like gone and like bought the same yarn and picked it out together and started at similar times or anything like that. So this will be an interesting I think it's been kind of fun. I don't know if we'll get to every time because I know we both have a lot of stash yarn right now too to work through, but I enjoy it. This has been fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, to talk about the yarn, it's already wound up. Unfortunately, I should have brought Mine my last too... unwind. I have brand new skeins though, if you want. Like, oh yeah. This might wait. be a little. Just appreciate, I wonder if this will focus. I think this is the cutest skein in the entire world. It looks like a little toasted marshmallow. It's a Surrey Alpaca by Moondrake in the color ivory. And then this is their sport weight wool. It's called Cormo Sport. Yeah, Cormo Sport. So we're holding them combined. Um, Technically, the champagne cardigan calls for a DK weight and a lace. Calls for double Sunday, Santa Scarn double Sunday. Yeah. Held with their like lace mohair. However, because the Surrey alpaca is so thick, it almost acts more like a fingering or a sport than it does a traditional lace. So because of that, we went down to a sport in the in the wool that we're holding it together with. So it equals out to be the same gauge, even though it's kind of like a sport in a sport instead of like a DK in a lace. It's worked out really lovely, though. Yeah. I feel like... Um, I don't know. This is my first time working with Siri. I don't know about same. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm a mohair person. Love mohair. Out every time, like if I could do <laughs> mohair with every project, it doesn't work in the summer always. But um, I really was mohair loyal, and so this Siri has me like. I don't know. Maybe I'm a Surrey maybe, person. Might be Surrey people. It's really just beautiful on the needles. I have. Um, so for my sleeves, I went with different needles. These, I don't know what the brand is, but these are the kind that you would get like at Joann's or something. And I will say they take away a little bit of the experience because when I was on my Tiagu, 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 I think, when I was on my um, interchangeable metal needles, this thing like flew. It was butter. It was just so smooth to, to knit with. And the wooden needles with the Surrey are not quite as wonderful, but it's still pretty great. Um, um, so I guess that's one whip for both of us. Yeah, do you want to show your next whip? Yes, although it's hardly uh, started. Um, really, the champagne cardigan is taking most of my time right now, but I'm starting to feel the pressure of a gift knit, so I did cast it on uh, and it doesn't look like anything right now. Sorry, we always have to like focus. Yee! Okay, maybe. Um, all it is is, no, it's not wanting to focus. It's just the collar of what will be a Friday sweater baby, or I've also seen where they call it Friday sweater mini. And I'm gonna make the size six month because like I said, it's very hot right now. So this um, new mom, who's a coworker of my husband's, she's due in the summertime and I was like, this baby is not going to be wearing a sweater in July in the Midwest. So we're going to do the six to nine month. Um, so it's going to be a little bit bigger than most of the baby sweaters I've knit. But um, it's just a broken rig rib sweater with stripes. And I picked out, this is Whisper from Emma's Yarn. We again have some white going on. And this is actually, um, oh, she has a fun name for it. The Hella Hank, I think. This has 600 some yards in it. It is huge. And um, then I'm gonna pair it with some little stripes that are this color, which is Wish You Were Beer. So it's gonna be a little striped 
baby sweater and I'm pretty confident I'm gonna have a whole lot of scraps so time allowing I'm gonna try to knit a matching hat and maybe even matching socks for little baby um, but like I said I, I actually do need to be working on this more than I am so we'll see how far we get I'll definitely finish the sweater but we'll we'll see what else we get done so yeah my other whip is not nearly as exciting but that's what we got <laughs> Well, I'll share my other whip. I only have two right now, so it's the champagne cardigan and then this one that I'm about to share. Although this one is honestly probably gonna go uh, in hibernation I here love soon. This. Yeah, it's, it's pretty thick. It's super thick. It's the Vavika cardigan by um, My Favorite Things Knitwear. I love that color. Yeah, the color. I need to hide my face so it will, it will focus. <laughs> the color is. Um, Oh, I can't remember what it's called, but the yarn. Oh, um, it's called Bison. Bison. I know because I found that online and I don't know if it was being discontinued or just being stopped in the store. I think it was Webs, maybe. Um, but it was on super sale and I was like, Jessica, I'm going to buy this. Do you want <laughs> so some added too? a few skates to the order as well? So yeah, I need to make something with mine. I was originally going to do a different pattern, but you were kind of convincing me that that's what it's meant to be. Well, it is, it's a bulky weight yarn and it's the Eco Merino by Cascade. Um, so the yardage is really good. I'm only going to need, I'm making the smallest size and I think I'm only going to need three skeins of it in order to make this cardigan. Um, one of the things that I really liked about this cardigan and the reason that I wanted to make it, I don't know if it'll focus. There we go. Is that it uses what is typically the wrong side of a half brioche stitch in order to create this unique texture. So typically on most patterns, you'll see the right side of the, the brioche stitch that just looks a little bit cleaner, more like a traditional fisherman's rib. Um, and I don't know, I liked that this pattern was utilizing what's typically the wrong side as the right side to just have like a, a more unique texture, something that I don't already have in my closet. Although I will say my had a little pet peeve with this pattern in the sense that if on Ravelry is advertised as a half fisherman's pattern and I love knitting half fisherman's uh it is not it's half brioche and to me those are different because brioche is when you use all of the yarn overs yeah it, which is what this uses half fisherman's you knit into the stitch below yes or normal fisherman's I guess not just half yeah but like then you alternate between a normal ribbing row and then the, the row that utilizes that like knitting into the stitch below technique so I went into this with the mindset that it was going to be a half fisherman's uh stitch and it's it's not it's a half of brioche but I like brioche knitting too I just I tend to gravitate more towards the fisherman's I don't know why I just think it's like easier for for me to knit but either one once you get into a rhythm of it it's it's super easy and and really fun and rhythmic to knit so i'm really enjoying it but like like we mentioned it's really hot here in the midwest and so this bulky weight sweater even though i'm pretty close to finishing the body i don't know i i may feel like working on it in which case i don't want to just like put it away but i also don't want to force myself to work on it if it's way too hot and i'm not feeling it so yeah we will we will see i think it's beautiful though i was originally thinking i think it's called jacket number one by my favorite things knitwear i was thinking i'd use that yarn for it and i don't know the stitches are really beautiful on that so we might see another one on here eventually we'll see but i'm, I'm gonna wait till the fall yeah mm -hmm. i'll say it does attract i have two cats so I keep picking off cat hair because it really does attract. <laughs> I can see all their little white hairs. So I'm gonna have to take care of this to like keep it away from them once it's finished and blocked and lint rolled and all of that because it's definitely gonna. I just I take my cats everywhere. They're they're attached to me in all sorts of little ways. So she's got one or she you've got two cats. Yeah, and I've got one cat. But our cats are related because yeah. um, my cat is one of her cat's grandpas. Yeah. The other cat's not related. He's just part of the fam. So. Yeah, just part of the fam. But um, but my cat is like double the size. So even though she's got two and I've got one. It's like we have the same amount of cats between yeah. us. It's a lot of cat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'll stop, uh, stop knitting on this and talk about my 
finished objects. We set this for really like a monthly recap maybe. So um, we've definitely finished more in the year, but we don't want to talk about every single thing this year. Um, so these are just things we finished really within the past month or um, pretty recently. I don't think anything's farther back than a month. So I'll start with my socks. And you did a pair of socks too, so maybe we'll just- I have two pairs. For our finished objects, yeah. we'll start with socks. Oh, you have two pairs. Oh my gosh, they're beautiful. Okay, so um, I finished the Poet socks. Let's see if this will focus because the lace detail on this is so beautiful. I've really been obsessed with this pattern for a long time and you've made it too. Mm -hmm. It's been um, a while. I don't know why I thought it would be a little bit more difficult. I think lace pattern, the beautiful thing about lace is that it looks so fancy and intricate, but every time I do it, I'm like, that wasn't that bad. So um, I was really happy with how these turned out. Also, I'm kind of glad that I'm sharing these as a finished object because I will say the other thing about lace has been that um, it doesn't always look as good until it's blocked. Like this girl was a little lumpy, a little uneven at first, just in, you know, before blocking does its magic. And so now that they're blocked and they're ready to wear, I'm just so happy with them. I actually haven't worn them yet because I wanted to share them while they're brand new looking on here. Um, but they were knit with Coast to Coast Sock Yarn in the Colorway Biscuits from her Book Tropes collection. And, and I actually I have, this have the same yarn that I used to make a sister sock. So this oh. is the <laughs> Verse Socks, um, also by Sari Nordlin. And you can see it's the same colorway and everything, also from Coast to Coast Yarn and her colorway button. But it is kind of interesting if we hold them up together, you can see Not the button. This is biscuits. Biscuits. Did I say button you. earlier? No, you said biscuits. Okay. We did also buy button in that um, book tropes collection. Yeah, button <laughs> is my favorite one, but no, you're right. This is biscuits. But you can see how different they are just based on the like, the dye lots, um, the color variation. So mine is a little bit. I would say lighter. Oh man, it keeps. Straight. I know it does not want to focus with focus. our faces. There we go. Maybe um, we'll hide. Yeah, yours is a lot lighter and softer. I feel like mine has a little more. I don't know if the word's contrast. It's a little or deeper. Or I think. Yeah. Yeah. Both they're, are beautiful though. They're both beautiful. I'm. I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I made it. It was just really interesting that we both ordered. Well, I think I bought mine at a local yarn store and you ordered yeah, these came in the mail. mail. So they were probably dyed at a different time depending on like, you know, where she needed her inventory <laughs> to be at that time. So, but both are beautiful. We love Coast to Coast. She's probably our favorite indie dyer. I, I would say right now she is my favorite indie dyer. And she only lives like three hours ish away <laughs> from us. So we kind of claim her as local or like a I'm a patiently local waiting dyer. for her soup collection that she keeps teasing. I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> anyway, do you want to share your other sock then since? Yeah. Um, this is also um, coast to coast, nothing, nothing too different or dramatic. Um, this is her colorway unexpected friendship. Um, and the pattern is the, Monday Sunday socks by Sari Nordland. Um, this was one of my first times using a uh, variegated speckled yarn. I don't typically work with it just because I'm always scared of how it's gonna knit up. And to be honest, I just generally like the look of solid colors more, but her speckles were just so beautiful. I couldn't help but wanting to make something out of them. Um, I will say I prefer lace socks to my cabled socks, just in the sense that like I like to knit my socks on double pointed needles, and so by the time I've already got five needles going, you when you add a six for your cable needle, it just kind of gets to be a lot to like keep track of. Um, but I love the like I love the finished product. So this is definitely more of yeah, like a product <laughs> than a process knit. Um, I'm gonna continue to knit cabled socks. I just love how they turn out. I just don't enjoy working on them quite as much as I do the lace socks or even just like really simple socks that don't don't have like a texture to them or something. Um, okay, this isn't going to be an order at all of what we said our podcast order would be, but I did. My only acquisition is related to socks. So do we want to do all of our sock stuff? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> so my plan this is the only acquisition i have right now and i actually did already wind it but um 
I really, really love this biscuit color. And so my plan for the leftovers of it, if it will, hello. It's not really that important, um, but it's just a really beautiful color. I think that it's, um, it would be a shame to waste any of it. And so Explorer Knits was having kind of a, um, I guess just like an inventory sale, like things left over. And I thought, okay, this part I will try to get it to focus. I thought that these two colors together, and this one has some speckles that kind of match it, would look really, really beautiful. And so um, that's my only acquisition right now. This is, I, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Petrature. Um, it is her cashmere sock. And it's got like a little, here, I wonder if this will show it more. It's got like a little bit of variegation, um, a little bit of like kind of speckly, it's <laughs> deciding if it wants to focus or not. Um, but some of the speckles really tie into this color. And um, Marlene Knits, who also has a podcast that I really enjoy watching, she is hosting a stripy knit along this summer. And so I thought it might be really nice to pair these two to do some sort of like stripe um, sock for that. So anyway, that's my plan for our sock knitting. I think we both really enjoy sock knitting in the summer. Yeah. So tis the season. Yes. Okay, sorry, that was my only acquisition. So um, I guess we're done with that, but we're not done with finished objects yet. So yeah. I'll let you share your next one. Uh, well, next and last one, actually, this is the Breeze Bag by Petite Knit. Try to hold it up real close so you can <laughs> see all the texture in it because it has such such lovely texture. Um, I was just obsessed with this when she released it. I've already used it a couple of times to go to the pool, so it may be a little like lumpy. It's not it's not freshly blocked. Um, but I used Sandus Garn line or Line. Line. Actually, I've heard it both ways. In my mind, this is not an acquisition, but I do have the yarn to make it because yeah. I want to make one. I've had that in stash for a little bit, but um, you can see this is what the original skein looked like before I knit it all up. Now, tell me, I don't know if I'm right about this or not, but our yarn store called this color Sandstone, and I didn't see that name online, so I'm wondering if there is different names depending on where you order it. Um, but it's definitely kind of a beige color. Yeah, kind of like a beigey almond color. Um, yeah, I, I knitted exactly the pattern. It's really simple to follow, pretty easy. The only thing is because there are so many, like, passing a stitch over the next two stitches in here, taking it apart is kind of a pain. So if you have to frog it for any reason, like if you have to take it back a row or two, it's, it's not very easy to do that <laughs> at all. Um, so just, like, if you do decide to make it, be really cautious, pay attention to what you're doing, try not to like have any reason to take it back. Um, and the other thing that I did with, with this pattern that's not necessarily like recommended, well I guess the only thing I did with this pattern that's not really recommended is um, Petite Knit recommends you put like some sort of tape uh, in between the double knitted bands because it's hollow on the inside. To be honest, I didn't have that material and I didn't feel like going out and buying that material for this bag. And so to prevent the straps from stretching too much, which is what that tape is meant to do, is to provide some structural integrity so that these straps don't like get massive. Um, I knit them to the required length that she recommended, but as I knit them like every so many inches, I would take my steamer and I would steam it and stretch it really, really far, like as far as it would let me. And that way I knew that the finished object was already going to be stretched quite a bit and it wouldn't be able to stretch anymore because of the way that the stitches are uh, knit. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't really know how to, to describe that. Basically like it's already been stretched so much that you can see like even as I'm trying to stretch it like it doesn't it doesn't have a lot of pull or elasticity to it. Um, Did so you I'm, do that on this part too or just this part? Just the like okay, the strap point. part. The part that's attached to the bag because it's attached because it's like picked up from here. Um, you know, it, it might stretch a little bit, but it'll stretch with the rest of the bag so it'll look more natural. So I wasn't too too stressed about that. Um, and when I was done, I did steam block this entire thing. 
normally I wet block everything, but with this being a bag and not something that I'm going to wear, I wasn't as concerned about it as I normally am. Typically, I'm like one of those people that you have to block absolutely everything. I block almost everything. <laughs> but I think steam blocking counts still. I, I wet block pretty much all of my garments unless it's like silk or some material that's not recommended. But anything wool, alpaca, mohair, anything like that, I always, always wet block. But yeah, this is my only only other finished object, but yeah, I was so happy with it. I've Like I said, I've already taken it to the pool twice. I just think it's so cute. I love it. So I kind of want to make it in another color this summer just so I can have some variety, but I don't know what color that would be. So we'll see if that I want to make it in a dark brown. Yeah, that would be like, beautiful. I think it would look really good. Yeah. But I already have the yarn for the one that you have, so I will do that one first. Yeah. Um, well, I've got two, um, but... Really, that seems like a lot to have three finished objects. I think that that is not normal for me, but what happened was last month, um, like back in May and even April, I cast on a bunch of stuff. And so now it's like finishing things that I've been working on a lot. Um, I wouldn't say I normally finish like two garments and a pair of socks in a month. That's kind of a lot. But um, then again, I also have all of July off. So maybe I will have some more finished, hopefully. Some more than me. I, yeah. I still work during the summer. Um, I'm a teacher, so I, I am blessed to have July off. Um, but this is my second finished object, I guess. Um, and, oh, I folded her up, and now she's got a little bit of a wrinkle. We'll steam her out again. Um, this is the Cumulus Tea by Petite Knit. I feel like everyone's been knitting this this summer. Um, and really it's just a stockinette gauge, so it's more about the fit and everything like that. Um, but I will say that I was pleasantly surprised with how well this fit and how flattering it is. I really, I don't have it on, but I really liked that the sleeves go down a little bit. I don't know why that detail, um, stood out to me, but it's just really flattering. Like it feels a little bit elevated compared to a normal t-shirt. So um, my only regret with this is actually that the color is a little bit cool and I might make another one that's a little bit warmer. Like, like more like this color. This is a warm neutral. This is a little bit cool. Um, this was knit with Knitting for Olive um, Pure Silk <laughs> and the color is putty. Knitting for Olive has done this to me a couple times. Um, please tell me if this is something that happens to you, but their colors, beautiful always. Um, they don't always come in the way that I expect them to. And normally it's that I expect the colors to be warmer than they actually are. So I thought this, I did think it was like a grayish. I expected it to have a little bit of a cool tone to it, but um, it definitely reads, to me at least, very gray. Um, I don't see as much of the warm tone as I did on the website. I don't yeah. know. Does that ever happen to you? No, it's happened to me for sure. Um, and like I said, I still think they're beautiful colors. I'm never like disappointed, but there are times that I open a knitting for all the package and I'm like, oh, that wasn't exactly what I was picturing, but that's okay. Um, and this one honestly flew by because it was so much of just plain stockinette. And oh, I think pretty much all of it after you get to the V um, is like in the round. And so just in the round stockinette, it goes so fast. I flew through this. So um, I definitely think I can knit another one, but I've definitely gotten my use out of this one already too. Um, and I did not make any modifications other than I think I shortened the length a little bit. I'd have to refer back to the pattern to check, but I, I think I shortened it. I knit it on a size up from what it recommended and on um, like a needle size up. Yeah. Needle size up. Yeah. Um, it calls for four skeins and I did end up using four skeins because what I did was I knit, um, I knit the whole body, put the sleeves on hold. I knit one sleeve and then I had just like, I, I had some yarn left from that third skein, but I wasn't confident that that third skein would finish it. And so I didn't want to get like all the way down here and then have to open a new yarn ball. I just went ahead and 
got that fourth skein out, open a yarn ball. That sounded funny. You know what I mean. Um, <laughs> started. <laughs> started, yeah. And so um, I did go ahead and start that fourth yarn ball, but I'd have to weigh this. I feel like I should have taken my chances because I might have been able to get away with just three. Um, I did knit the smallest size for this, so that would probably only apply to the smallest size. But I feel really confident that if I shortened the body a little bit, I could definitely get away with just three. So I think if I make this again, I will probably take my chances and just order three skeins. I think I'd want to do it in the cream. I really do like the pure silk. I would do it again in that yarn. Um, yeah, I just wish it was a little bit warmer. It's a cool color. That's okay. Yep. And... You don't have any other finished objects, so I guess. Nope, we've gone through mine. <laughs> I'll keep going. Also the same color. <laughs> um, this is the Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta. This was my first Ozetta pattern. You've done quite a few, I Wait, think. Wait, is this not? Oh yeah, that's just a regular rib. Yeah, you, haven't you made this one before? Yeah, I just forgot how the button band was done. Um, it's knit at the same time. So you like cast on from here, or no, that's not true. You provisional cast on, knit a little strip, cast on under the strip, and then you knit everything down at the same time. I guess let me see if we can get a good focus on this fisherman's rib pattern. And this is really a true half fisherman's. It's kind of wanting to focus. So um, a little different than the pattern you're working on. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't made that before. I just it's been a minute, so I forgot that's that's how it was done. But <laughs> when I made that pattern, I don't know my gauge, my, I gauge swatched and the swatch was perfect, but something happened. I don't know. It it was still a fine sweater. It just wasn't like oversized. Yours looks smaller. Oh, I yeah. didn't say that. This is because she has two versions of the pattern. She's got just the normal seasons cardigan and then the oversized. Yeah. And this is the oversized, and I knit the size two. Yeah, because I so really since wanted my turn it that small. I was like, Rachel, make the size up. <laughs> you <laughs> saved like, me. <laughs> yeah, so hers turned out great. I yes. mean, mine's fine, but just not how I like had envisioned it. Now, I don't think I did any modifications except for I say I didn't do any modifications, but um, I noticed on a lot of people's on Ravelry that their ribbing was, and yours kind of did this too, I think. Um, it was like really cinched in and it almost had like a bomber's jacket kind of look to it. And I wanted mine to be a little bit more um, like open. cohesive. Yeah, cohesive. Like straight down. And so I think she recommends going two needle sizes down. And I only went one. Um, I think that was the only modification I did. The other thing, and I'm, I am going to go back and change this. I don't know what I was thinking, but the buttons I picked out for this they were a little tiny. They're a little tiny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> this sweater is feeling really big now. <laughs> um, they don't look like big buttonholes. I don't know if you can even see that. Um, but they looked pretty small while I was making them. So I was like, oh, it calls for pretty small buttons. These buttons don't work. They are purely aesthetic at this I point. I like I used fairly large buttons. So I don't yeah. know where you got the idea of this. <laughs> and well, and after, where are my buttons even? After I did that, I was looking on Instagram and Ravelry and I was like, nobody else has that small <laughs> buttons. I don't know why. Um, but I'll go back and change that. To be honest, I, I have been wearing this because even though we keep saying it's hot here in the air conditioning, it's been really, really cold. I'm still working even though I just said I'm a teacher, I'm doing summer school. And so um, being in the air conditioning, it is really nice to have a sweater, but I've never closed it. It is just something I've been wearing over like t-shirts and dresses and um, really everything. I feel like I was just saying with the other, with the t-shirt that this was kind of a cool color and I wish it was warmer, but actually for a cardigan, I, I really, really love this color and I feel like it has gone with everything. So um, even though it is really warm, I have been wearing this, but I do want to fix the buttons before winter so I can wear it closed because... And what yarn did you use? Oh, good question. Um, I used <laughs> two yarns. I used Broco's ultra alpaca i think does that sound right that sounds right okay yeah <laughs> um that i feel really confident about that saying that actually um i ordered it forever ago thinking i was gonna knit a sweater for my husband in this color 
it just didn't have a good stitch, stitch definition for cables. And if I'm going to take the time to knit a men's cable sweater, because, you know, they're they're bigger than we are, it's going to take a while. Um, I, I just feel like they like things longer. I feel like yes. all men's patterns are longer, whereas, like, a lot of women's patterns, like, crop things. Or yes. even if they're not cropped, I crop them because I like to wear high-waisted <laughs> pants. Yeah, it takes a lot longer. Um, and so... I was like, I just don't think this is right for a cable sweater, and it stayed in my stash for a while, which I try to use up yarns that I get pretty fast, so that's why I was like, wait, what was this? Um, but it did stay in my stash for a little bit, and then I held that. Oh, also, I am not super confident in this, but I'm pretty sure that the color name that I used... Um, it definitely started with an E, but I'm not confident if I'm saying exactly right. It's like Eater Down or something like that. E-I-D-E, -E, something like that. So when you go on and you find Ultra Alpaca, the one that starts with the letter E that's kind of a grayish color, that's what I used. Um, and I held it double with Knitting for Olive Mohair in the color Oat. So we've got two. And I'm actually really, really glad that I used Mohair with this because... Um, I find that my things with mohair really don't pill a lot. They tend to hold up, so um, knock on wood, I hope that that's the case for this piece too. I did snag it at some point, I'm like seeing it on the camera somewhere. Um, but I really think this is a piece that I'm going to get a lot of use out of, I kind of already have. So yeah, it's and I'll probably classic. get another one before too long. Um, I think that I've seen people using heavy merino um, for or, yeah, is that right from Knitting for Olive? Yeah. And they have a lot of really beautiful colors. So that might be in my nearish future. Maybe a fall project. Yes. Yeah. I am really in love with the Dusty Artichoke color. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that takes us through all the finished objects. I actually don't have any acquisitions right now, which is really unusual for me. Um, but I'm trying to knit through my stash. So the way I've been kind of like organizing my projects right now is I've been trying to estimate like how long I think a project is just going to take me and then writing that down and I'm trying to wait until I have less than like two months worth of projects before I buy more because I just I don't want to be I don't like having like an excessive amount of stash it stresses me out like I feel guilty for not using things that I bought so this month we're being good and we're gonna knit down our stash and then probably next month since I'm not since I don't have like any like summer projects going these are all like wool projects I'll probably cave and buy some more yarn for some summer projects but for well, the and time the, being, the soup collection from yeah Coast and the Coast. soup collection. I'm really anticipating it yeah I think one of the colors is kind of similar to this color and I'm just really liking it right now yeah we're, we're a sucker for some good like neutrals or greens and things yes. like that so coast to coast tends to to really speak to <laughs> speak to our heart in that way so I'll probably buy some of those but for for the time being I don't have any acquisitions um and with that I think that's all that we have to share for this episode um but if you would share if you've made or are making any of these things or plan on making them, we'd love to share or to hear what you're working on no. um, or just anything that you're working on. Um, if we, there's anything you want to know from us or... Yeah, we always love hearing what people are working on and like seeing it on yeah. YouTube and Instagram. <laughs> so it's always nice to like get inspiration and I feel like folks always yeah. find patterns that we want to necessarily find on our own if someone else had it found it first so that's the great thing about yeah. this community um, but thank you for joining us and um we'll be back soon i guess uh do all the normal youtube things like like subscribe or uh, is it follow or subscribe i think it's subscribe um whatever the youtube whatever the youtube is <laughs> um we are gonna try to at least do monthly if not more but we don't really have a schedule or a plan to share with you so um if you'll follow that or subscribe uh whatever it I is you can get like notifications somehow so yeah. that people like know do that so you can see uh, our next updates because we don't know when they will be yeah, we'll figure it uh, out. and so yeah just a good way to stay connected um yeah. but yeah thank you so much for joining us yeah